So Intel's new lineup of the KB Lake processors are being revealed. Some YouTubers have them, they've ran some benchmarks, but most importantly, what is the 7700K like? And is it worth it if you're trying to buy a gaming computer for the new year of 2017? More coming up in just a second. Welcome back Tech Junkies and welcome to the channel. My name is JD from JD Tech Gear and today we're gonna have another PC talk, I guess, about whether or not the new KB Lake processors are worth it, but more specifically the 7700K. Traditionally, a processor's performance isn't gauged towards gaming, it's more in the multitasking and rendering of certain programs and functionalities on the computer, more so than gaming. Now, Intel has been focusing more on mobile processor development instead of uh, desktop performance. So we have seen over the previous couple of generations that the increase of performance has kind of stagnated and been on the decline as far as the processor's performance go. Now, as a short disclaimer, no, I don't have a 7700K nor a 6700K, but there are benchmarks out there and there are people with the 7700K and there are plenty of benchmarks with the 6700K, just enough to compare them. These benchmarks are specifically from WCCF uh, tech. Yeah, you can check them out in the link below and we'll also be showing some of the benchmarks from there. So let's talk about the specs. So the 7700K is going to be listed at $350. The 6700K is going to be is listed currently at $340. Um, um, that'll probably go down hopefully as the 7700K is released, uh, is released later on. Um, it's actually about $310 on eBay right now. But the biggest difference of course is within the clock speeds. It's about a 7% difference or boost from the 6700K. Now, do you really need that 7% boost when it comes to gaming? Now you might be thinking, okay, well, what about the individual core performance and the temperatures and also the power consumption? Well, those are all good questions. And believe it or not, those are actually relatively the same, um, actually almost identically the same in a couple of cases, the 6700K was actually a little bit cooler than the 7700K. So what kind of FPS difference are we looking at when it comes to gaming? Well, believe it or not, it's about a 1 to 10 frames difference. So basically nothing. I mean, those fluctuate all the time. So when you compare on an average, it's kind of almost the same, pretty much exactly the same. So is that exactly worth it to get the 7700K? Now, when coming to these two different processors, um, you also have to spend money on new motherboards. Well, not necessarily or specifically, but you have the new Z170 motherboards that are being released and everything about that is just extra money, extra money that you have to spend. And there are minor upgrades and small differences within the motherboards. These are differences that you're most likely not even going to notice, especially for the average gamer. Now, the major point I'm trying to convey here in this video is that people that are on a budget, these are for people that are in the market for buying a new computer or even upgrading their computer for the year of 2017. While we haven't heard about the Ryzen processor just yet, um, while at the time of making this video, um, I'm just comparing the Intel lineup of processors. You're going to spend more money on a bleeding edge processor that has relatively the same performance as its previous generations. So when it comes to gaming, you really don't need to spend that extra money on it. Now, if you want the bleeding edge and you have the extra money, then by all means, go ahead. But for those of you that are trying to save money and trying to budget your money for the best value possible, you don't have to exactly go with the 7700K. And the reason why I picked the 7700K out of the whole entire KB Lake lineup is because that's the most popular out of the entire lineup. But even from the Skylake processors, 
we saw minimal differences from its previous generations as well. So I'm gonna go with something that I can compare it with, and that's the 4790K. Now the 4790K was released in 2014, running at about $340, $350. Now the main difference is, is it runs DDR3 memory. DDR3 memory is the previous generation of memory, DDR4 is new generation. So DDR4 memory runs a little bit faster, has less bottleneck, and all sorts of things. I don't know too much in depth about DDR4 memory, but what I do know is that DDR3 memory still runs really good. And actually there's only small differences between the DDR3 memory and DDR4. So when you're considering processors and also memory, those are things you actually might not even have to consider too much about because DDR4 memory, as far as gaming goes, you're not even gonna see that much of a difference. I just wanted to compare the 4790K with the 6700K here. So now not only are we comparing the 7700K with the 6700K, but we're also in a sense comparing what the 4790K is with the 7700K. Um, because the 6700K is, is relatively identical to the performance of the 7700K in respects to gaming, remember that, we're not doing rendering or anything else like that. I don't know what the benchmarks are for that and I don't want to go too much in depth about it. My knowledge is now in gaming. So, as far as the gaming goes, the 4790K, um, this, these benchmarks were pulled up in CPU Boss. I'll put a link down below and I'm also gonna show it up on the screen here. So the things that stick out to me, the single core performance for the 4790K scored a 9.8, while the 6700K had an 8.9. Now, while all the cores are being used during benchmarking, um, the 4790K scored a 7.7 .7 and the 6700K scored a 5.8. That's almost a pretty drastic difference there. Now the value for performance is almost identical. The overall score for the 4790K is 8.2 and the 6700K is a 7.9. So overall, your value and your best money was put towards the 4790K. Now the problem with these processors are is they stay about the same price even two or three years after they've been released. So that's another problem that I've seen here where you can find deals on these processors is what's most important because you can find deals on the on the 4790K and the 6700K but because the 7700K is so new you're not nearly going to find a price uh, you're not going to find a price match that's going to be nearly close to these. So in conclusion is the 7700K worth it for the KB Lake series? For gaming, in my honest opinion, no, it's not worth it. And especially with the AMD Ryzen coming up, that's another series contender that we have to, well, I don't know if it's a series contender right now, but it can be. But that's another thing to consider is what I'm trying to say. But as far as Intel goes, the improvements have been minimal and stagnated. And it's kind of sad to see because I want to see desktop performance, you know, increase. Hopefully that doesn't continue and we can see more improvements in desktop computing along in the future and keep these things going. But to reduce the price for the value and the performance of these processors would be really nice to see because these processors are pretty expensive. They can be up to a quarter or a third of your budget for your computer alone. So it's a big thing to consider. So I just wanted to make this video for those of you who are in the market for something like this or just curious to kind of have um, an open perspective and an open mind to where this CPU market is in regard to Intel only. Um, AMD is a different story, so I'm not really going to discuss them in this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I just wanted to do this to open up a new perspective and kind of talk about it because it's something that sits on my mind and I want to talk about it. So yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I um, want to thank you guys for watching and uh, hopefully I will catch you guys next time. So uh, thank you guys. You